Oh yeah, what's up all, all my Jaguars out there? You know who I am. Ralph Jaguar is back with another epic one. And welcome to another epic episode of Ralph's Universe The Reboot. Let's do it. You know, you know what Jaguars? I have been watching TV all of my life, okay? Ever since the day I was born, you know, I have seen all kinds of TV shows. Good, bad, the ugly, and the insane. And not to mention the inane. And I have to say that, you know, TV has taught me an awful lot. It's taught me a lot about life. And, and the things that are going on in my crazy universe. And the things that I have learned from watching TV has really helped me out. And given me some really great ideas. And one of the great things that I have learned from watching all these damn TV shows is the importance of copyright protection and patent. Now I'm pretty sure that all of you have heard of heard of this of these two words before, right? You come up with an idea and or an invention if you will, you have to either patent it or or come up with a copyright for it. Okay, you all know that. Okay, now let me tell you three stories, okay? Now, now the three stories that I'm about to tell you are really fictional stories, but they are based on some true and some real events that have been happening in the real world, okay? And I got these stories from my favorite TV shows that I have been watching. And, well, let's see, how can I put this? You see, Basically, the stories that I'm about to tell you are three examples of why, you know, people have to copyright and or, you know, patent their ideas and invention. You know, when you come up with something, that is to protect you and that is to prevent others from stealing your artwork or a song or anything you might want to invent, okay? So, let me go ahead and tell you. So let me go ahead and get right to it, okay? Now, the TV show that I want to talk about first is, is a sitcom TV show called California Dreams. Now, I'm sure that many of you, like some of the older generation, probably remember this show, okay? Now, this is a show from way, way back in the day. And, uh, you know, it's a sitcom show about a band of high school kids, you know, you know, starting out from scratch, uh, you know, they've come together to try to make it big, okay? And this is a mixture of, you know, boys and girls. You know, I watched this show a lot way back in the day. I got hooked up on it. And this show is really funny and it's really epic, I'll tell you that. Now, one of the members is a uh, name is uh, Jake Summers. Um, his real name is J. Anthony Frank. Now, in this episode titled "Fallen Idol," Jake Summers meets his inspiration and idol, Zane Walker, a famous guitarist and singer, who hadn't 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 had a hit in over a year. Okay, so. Zane listened to California Dreams perform their song for him. And Zane said that he liked their song and he wanted to introduce them to his manager. Okay, and then 
Jake Summers performed his song, his song at Zane's party. Zane's manager also there was also there at the party. Zane and his manager said that they really liked the song. By the way, the name, the name of the song was called Too Much to Dream. So Zane, <clears throat> okay, and that is when Zane said that he was going to help him out and try to, you know, make California Dreams famous. And then, so the next day, when when Jake and all of his friends in the band went to go went to go meet uh, Zane Walker at his hotel room, um, well, actually, it was an apartment, but hey, that's not the point of the story, okay? He went over there. He he saw that you know Zane wasn't there. He had already done moved out. That's what the housekeeper said. And then he he turns on Jake turns on the radio, and guess what? He heard his song on that being played on the radio, okay? And the guy on the radio said that, you know, the song called Too Much to Dream was by Zane Walker. You know, so basically Zane actually stole the song Too Much to Dream. You know, the song that Jake actually wrote. Zane passed it off as his own and did not give Jake or his bandmates any credit for the song. <sighs> That's right. A very famous legend, a, a guitarist who hadn't had a hit in over a year. He actually stole a song from Jake Summers, okay? And by the way, Jake, did I mention that Jake Summers is a high school kid, probably 16 or 15 years old? And and you're telling me that a grown man, a very famous guitarist and a singer, is going to sit there and steal a song from a kid? Oh, jeez. Well, anyways, by the way, um, Zane Walker was played by Julian Stone. And, you know, and you want to know the, what was so funny about this whole thing? What I found so intriguing about this? At the end of the episode, you know, you know, Jake's friend, Jake's, you know, friends wanted to go tell the public, you know, what uh, Zane did, but, but uh, Jake didn't want to do that because he wasn't, see, Jake was not mad that um, Zane stole his song because, you know, because Jake said that, you know, he can always write another song, but, uh, what really upset him was the fact that Zane Walker actually stole his song. You, you see that? Because Jake can always write another song, but he just lost a hero, an idol. He was real pissed off about him losing his idol. And that is what amazed me, people. And it's a damn shame, too. Famous guy like that can actually take advantage of and steal from a high school kid. That's really jacked up. And it's messed up. And you know this. Oh, jeez. How do you steal from a kid? Gee whiz. Come on now. All right, let me tell you another story, okay? Now, this, came, this comes from another TV show called City Guys from uh, the network you know, TNBC. And I'm sure a lot of people are fans of that show too, okay? City Guys is a show about some more high school kids. Um, you know, you know I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're more familiar with uh, Chris and Jamal and Don, and more particularly, you know, L Train, you know. Well, let me tell you, in this episode titled Face the Music, you know, L Train, you know, 16 year old high, high school kid. He writes a song, and his hero, you know, Slick Willie Bill, steals a song that he wrote, okay? He stole the song. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you already, some of y'all already probably watched the episode, you know. Same old story, L Train. He showed and uh, performed a song for 
slick woolly bill you know slick woolly bill was going to help him out with it because he's a famous guy he's going to help out l train but instead of doing that slick woolly bill he stole l train's song and i'll tell you i yeah i remember this episode you know and when and when this happened l train he was going to mess up slick woolly bill and he should have and if chris and jamal and miss noble was not there to hold l train back he would have messed them up i mean l train would have tore woolly bill apart but I guess that wouldn't accomplish anything, huh? I mean, that right there was just foul and really jacked up. Are you effing kidding me on this? Jeez. <sighs> okay, now let's come up more, more up to date, okay? And what's going on in the present. Let's talk about a brand new series that's coming up on TV. It's the show called The Ant Farm, okay? From the Disney Channel. I'm a fan of this show too. Now on Ant Farm, you know, this is a show about some gifted kids, you know, who have special talents. China, China Ann McClain, you know, she's real good with the music. She can sing and all that. Olive, she can memorize things. And Fletcher, Quimby, a real good artist, he can draw, he can paint, he can sculpture, he can do all of that. Now, let's talk about the episode called Fraudulent, okay? Zanko, you know, Fletcher's favorite artist, who is played by Ernie Grunwald. China urged Fletcher to give Zanko one of his paintings, so Zanko could display it in a show, and that would you know, help, you know, that would help Fletcher, you know, make him famous and all that. Oh yeah, Zenko does display it all right in his show, but Zenko passed the, the painting off as his own. You know, the painting that Fletcher did. That's right, Zenko, he stole Fletcher's painting. Okay, and, and we all know what happened in the rest of the episode, right? That's when Fletcher, China, and all of they got together. They decided to try to steal the painting back. But the funny thing, well, okay, a real funny thing that happened was, was that, was that Fletcher decided to replace the painting with another one of his paintings that he painted. It looked exactly like it. Well, thus, you know, kind of being the original artwork. Hmm. Yeah, that's what China pointed out. Yeah, real nice. Okay. Ah, uh, damn. Now, those are, of course, you know, fictional stories. But however, you know, that is what's really happening in the real world, unfortunately. And that is why... I feel like it was important that we discuss, you know, the importance of copyright protection and, and patent, okay? You know, copyright protection, that is when you, like, like if you come up with an image, I suppose, then that is when you have to copyright protect it, you know, that will prevent anyone from stealing your work. You know, like if, like if you draw a picture and uh, yeah, if you draw a picture of any kind, you know, and you and you decide you want to put it up online or whatever, or you want to show it to another person, you know, you have to copyright protect that. And the thing that amazes me about it that is, you know, they assume that, you know, like little kids, especially high school kids, you know, are supposed to know that. You know, that's the whole thing about it. And it's happening over and over again, and that just really pisses me off, you know. You know, people are getting their hard work, you know, stolen from them. What the F is this? You kidding me on this? Jeez. <sighs> yeah, and by the way, you know, Fletcher, he's only like 11 years old or 12 years old. 
And, and you know, and that's what makes it even worse. I mean, how can a grown man steal from a kid, you know, take advantage of a kid? You effing kidding me on this? I mean, I could never do that, by the way. I mean, well, first of all, I never steal in the first place, but I just don't see how grown men can take advantage of a little kid and then steal from a kid. I mean, cause, cause see, I'll tell you what, in order for someone to copyright protect your work, and in order for you to get that patent on the invention that you create, you know, it costs a lot of money. And and I, I seriously doubt that there's, there is a kid that can afford that much, okay? You know, just starting out, whether it's in the art field or writing a song or, you know, or anything else. But I have, but I'm going to tell you what, okay? I have come up with, with an image to protect my stuff, okay? That's right. Because I do have an image that is copyright protected, a logo, if you will. You want to call it that. It protects everything that I draw, okay? Because you see, I have been hearing about stuff like this happening. You know, I've got a couple of friends who've been talking about this. And, and I was, and before I was really, really worried that someone was going to steal my stuff, but now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Because this image that I have come up with, this logo, if you will, if you want to call it that, you know, it's copyright protected. What I did was I went to a website and they copyright protected for you. But uh, what I also want to mention is, you know, since most of my stuff, well, actually all of my stuff is on YouTube, you know, because you don't know that once you upload it to YouTube, you know, it is, you know, published here, I believe, and therefore it is protected and that, and that, you know, it is your stuff because, because you cannot upload anything that you don't have the rights to it. I mean, once you upload it here, you know, you got the rights to it. But anyway, this image that I've come up with, it, it uh, protects all of my stuff. That's right, and here is my logo. That's right, and in order for me to protect all of my stuff, I came up with something. And this image right here is copyright protected. Yep, here it is, Jack. Here it is, Jaguars. This is the logo that I put together myself. I designed it and created it and I was able to get it copyrighted. And this right here protects everything that I create. You know, on paper or 3D, you know, whatever you want to call it property of Ralph J images and of course I know that in the past few episodes of Ralph's Universe the reboot some of you may have noticed you know this image on on most of the episodes of the reboot and at the front of each episode you know you've noticed that it says you know, Ralph J. Images pre presents. And, 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 and it's pretty obvious, you know, what the purpose of this logo is right here. Because this right here pre prevents anyone from stealing any of my stuff. Because I'm making it clear that, you know, this logo right here is copyright protected and owned by me, Ralph Jaguar. Because after I created this logo right here, you know, I went to the website called galleryworldwide.com You know, I filled out the paperwork and was able to get this image copyright protected. And this is and like I said before, you know, this image is solely owned by me. 
and therefore I don't have to worry about you know any about losing any of my stuff to anybody now of course you know when you go to the website you know yeah there is a you know a fee that you'll have to pay because I know cuz cuz when you go to other websites you know for this for stuff like this you know yeah they're extremely expensive you know more like like hundreds of dollars and all that kind of stuff but but I really feel like the smart thing to do is to go to www.galleryworldwide.com you know follow the instructions there and they will copyright protect all your stuff and I think it's uh, you know pretty obvious and smart thing to do and this is definitely a good way to keep all of your stuff safe you know you can put it online without having to worry about you know anyone taking it you know this is just a precaution that you know I've taken but like I mentioned before you know like when you upload something to YouTube um, you know it should be considered as safe because because you know it's published there and it's yours Peace out till the next episode. Oh. oh.